What's an American issue you are too European to understand? Why pay for the bigger soda cup if there are free refills for the small? McDonald's actually charges the same price for any size, so you might as well get the big one for when you leave. I've lived in the US for 30 plus years, and I still don't understand the fraternity slash sorority system. I was in one, and I still don't understand. 1. Where are the street lights in mostly part of the neighborhoods? At least here in SD, have a walk after sunset is risky causes pretty dark. 2. Cars passing you in highway by the right line. 3. Driving with 16 years old, voting with 18 years old, but not being able to drink until 21 years old. Crazy. If cars are passing you on the right it's cause you're slow. Your bathrooms. What idiot thought it was okay to have very small doors with gaps on all sides in every stall? How are you supposed to quietly poop and stink and fart without everyone seeing you? I can understand why you are so afraid of unisex bathrooms. I'm still baffled by it too. Black Friday. Every time I see a video about it I cringe. The behavior depicted is always utterly disgusting and so unbelievably primal. Over here we have a prolonged period where sales are allowed, and even though there's more shoppers than normal I can't recall people being desperate for a stupid discounted item. I've been to several Black Fridays in a ton of big stores and I've never seen anything close to what videos show. I also live in the Midwest and people are really into social here. I went to Walmart last time and I saw a maximum of maybe 20 people. I went to Walmart last time and I saw a maximum of maybe 20 people. This gave me an introvert boner. Asian here. But, why wear shoes inside your homes? I live in Arizona. Scorpions is why. Exactly. Shit ruins your day. And if it hits a nerve, can ruin far more than just a day. My mom got stung on a nerve and still can't close her left hand all the way after 15 plus years. School debts. A lot of this had to do with the federal government getting into the student loan business. They will basically give a loan to anyone with a pulse, regardless of what they are majoring in, or how long they are going to school for. In turn, colleges raised their tuition costs, because they knew that the government would foot the bill. Before the government got involved, college was actually affordable. I'm surprised nobody has mentioned the prison population. Punishment is the mindset of the prison system. The threat of prison time is supposed to stop people from committing crime and treats it as solely a voluntary choice by someone who intends to harm another or society. The logic therefore means rehabilitation is useless and harsh consequences have to be used to prevent crime. This reflects the idea of personal responsibility in all areas of life, which is a major tenet of modern American philosophy. The end result is higher recidivism of criminal by circumstances, lack of treatment of mentally ill criminals, and continuing support of mandatory minimum sentences as well as execution. The lack of paid maternity leave. The thought of having to hand my children to strangers and go back to work weeks after giving birth. Nobody seems enraged about what that must do to babies and mothers. I think a good portion of that is, a lot of people just don't even know that there is an alternative. Until I started talking to people in other countries slash paying attention to worldwide information I was not even aware that American paid time off and maternity leave was shit. I was perfectly happy with my employer for providing me two weeks paid vacation that cannot be taken all at once because that is significantly better than a lot of small employers like mine offer. So in turn you are grateful to your job for even allowing maternity leave, not getting mad that it is not longer. What what what? two weeks and can't be taken all at once. What's the point even? I'm Australian and I know we are known for having approximately 500 days of holidays each year, but for a full-time worker the minimum is 4 weeks paid leave each year, and then you can negotiate for even more flexibility. So for instance, I can take my 4 weeks at full pay, or I could negotiate to say take 8 weeks at half pay, if my employer agrees. How do you not go completely insane only having two weeks a year away from work, and not even all at once? To me that legit sounds like a form of torture. Here in Sweden mothers or fathers can stay home with the baby for one and one half years with 80% pay, and be guaranteed by the government that they will have their job when they get back. I can't even imagine that. 
I live in the US and have significantly more leave than anyone I know at 8 weeks. Most are lucky to get 2 weeks here. <laughs> Having to register for voting. What? Why don't you just get a letter at home stating you only need that letter and an ID? Show up here or there on that day and that's it. Because Americans don't have to register their place of residence either. So where does the state send the letter to? The McDonald's ice cream machine being broken. Dude. We don't get it either. People are saying it's broken because they don't want to clean it, but it's actually the complete opposite. It's broken because they do clean it. To clean the machine you have to off it, wait the hour or so it takes to defrost, spend the hour or so it takes to clean it, all of it, turn it back on, wait the hour or so for it to freeze up, then fill it up with the ice cream mix. Employees are required to do this once a day and often do it the same time every day. So if you always go to McDonald's the same time every day that's probably why the machine is always broken. It's a lot easier to say it's broken than to explain that is being cleaned. ISPs actually having data caps on wired connections in 2019. It's only in some states, but why does the cap to exist to begin with? We existed without it perfectly fine beforehand, and now we need one. Bullshit. It's just another way for Comcast to milk more money out of the consumer. Why does the cap to exist to begin with? Because many of the telecom companies own or are in bed with media companies and the majority of consumer applications that use terabytes of data every month are associated with alternative delivery of entertainment slash media. If you're Time Warner or at and slash Direct, you don't want people to cut the cord on your digital media subscriptions, so you impose data caps to make sure that it's painful for the customers that choose not to subscribe to your TV package as well. Why do you pay the taxes yourself? It's way easier to have it done for you by your state slash country, since you have to pay anyway. Tax companies lobbied the government so that the eyes department in charge of taxes cannot do them for us, which you have to imagine is the easiest lobbying of all time. Hey gov instead of you paying employees and systems to auto file every owns taxes why don't you just not and then they can pay us to do it and if they get it wrong you can fine or jail them. Free labor or a paycheck win win. Not rioting or demonstrating. I mean I'm French, so the bias is big here. You don't always see it, but it happens. The Million Man March is a great yearly example. There are definitely protests. But to be effective, it has to make noise. A 200 person protest might be big news on a local news channel, or maybe even a state news channel, but it won't break federal news, unless it's a really slow news day. But for millions of people to take part, leave their job for a day or more, and travel to where others are, it's a huge undertaking. And it is debatable if it actually does any good at all. I don't remember the last time anything actually happened because of a protest. To really do it, you have to be disruptive, and that usually means multiple days, which means people are losing their jobs, probably. American work culture, Euro here, I have direct experience of working in high tech office environment, US folk arrive in early and leave late, but productivity is rubbish. People seem to spend so much time wandering the corridors in our 37.5 hours we easily I did as much as the US 50, minus 60 hours. We figured it was all about being seen to be a hard worker as job security was so flimsy. American here. At a previous job, I would typically work from home two days a week and go into work around 10am to 10.30am. I had a 90 minute drive each way. I would then leave work around 5pm. Everyone else would go in at 8.30am and leave around 6pm. I was the only software developer, but would knock out tickets left and right, bug fixes, hot patches, new features, report pulledouts for the bay folks, everything. I was easily doing the job of 3 or 4 developers, in addition to being on call 247365 to ensure that nightly batch processes ran correctly, otherwise business could not proceed as normal the next morning. I still got constant reprimands for not being in the office, or coming in late slash leaving early. So, I started coming in by 9am, and leaving at 6pm. 
my productivity dropped drastically, and I stopped being on call on Friday nights and Saturdays as a result of being more tired as my commute was now much longer, usually 120 minutes each way, due to my commute now being smack dab in the middle of rush hour. I'm of the opinion that a shorter and or flexible work culture leads to greater worker productivity as the workers are more focused and relaxed. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.